Welcome to the KTM 390 Duke launch. We're in sunny Spain. We've got some 390 Dukes to mess about on. This is gonna be a bloody good day. Chop seat, roll the intro. There's Junior doing his stuff. Go on, Junior! We're on the 390. This is uh, this could be a bit of a quick ride. This one, I think. 90% new. This bike TFT, very similar to the Super Duke five-inch TFT. New suspension, new subframe, new frame, new engine. I mean, they've, they've they've done a lot of work on this machine. The disc is now moved to the right. The shock is offset now, a bit like a Panigale. You know, it's on one side of the bike to give it a better look. I think from the side but it's uh, you know it's a really really rather good looking good looking motorcycle let's have a look at Neves on that one there you go it's a good looking bike and of course two colors orange and uh, that orange and blue suspension's a little bit soft at the rear you've got adjustable preload on the rear could do with a little bit more preload there Johnny I think coming here a bit more on the rear there it's a bit a bit soft for us big buggers. I did ask what this weighed, and I think it's something like 165 kilos wet, or something like that. I'll, I'll pop it on the screen. Quite ridiculously light. In <laughs> fact, it feels it. It feels being 6'2", 20 stone. I mean, this, this bike is too small for me. Don't get me wrong. The photos and video of me riding this machine is going to be going to be a little bit ridiculous. With the subframe, they've dropped the seat height, so the seat height is reduced compared to the old model. So, um, you know, more shorties can get their feet down early because KTM guys are saying, you know, this is a, a bread and butter bike for them. Now, this bike sold all over the world really well, you know, all different markets. This is this is a big seller, so you know, it has to it has to work for these guys. All right, MTC on. We don't really want any of that. So let's see, how can we turn off the? Uh, the wheelie control. I mean, look at this display for a you know, six grand motorcycle. Uh, rider mode off. Do you need traction control on a 44 horsepower motorcycle? You certainly don't when you're 20 stone. Let's put it that way. I've got natural extra rear wheel grip. This bike has also got the optional Remus can on it as well. Pretty quiet still. So they've worked some magic on the engine, made quite a lot of development work on the engine. They say they've made it warm up quicker in cooler climates and warm up slower in hotter climates by centralising the sort of the, the heat sensor on the bike. Oh, I think all they're talking about is when the thermostat opens and closes. They've also reworked the gearbox and improved the change between fifth and sixth. I think there was a couple of false neutrals perhaps in, in, in the old gearbox they've got rid of those we'll see we'll, we'll be the judge of that oh they've got brewers too already in top gear there's a reasonable amount of pull when you open it up obviously it's only 44 horsepower and i think 38 newton meters at all but it's got a reasonable amount of pull even with a 20 stone fatty you know obviously you've got to work the engine Quick shifter actually seems very nice. You can feel that it's a single. You can definitely feel those sort of single vibes when you come off the throttle. There's a few little vibes through the bars, but the KTM singles, I mean, they're the they're the master of the single really. And with the balancing shafts and everything else, they chuck at them now these days. It's incredible the amount of vibrations from a from a big, relatively big single. But there's a few little vibes through the bars, but again, it's not high frequency. It's not gonna, not gonna worry you. <laughs> Look at that squadron of 390s. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> I can't get it up. Apparently, there's a 4.5 kilo weight reduction 
from the wheels and tyres. It's got the Michelin Power 6s on, which I think are a new a new Michelin, and combined with the lighter weight tyres, they're saying four and a half kilos saved of rotational mass of the wheels, which is uh, quite incredible, isn't it? It's almost like fitting carbon wheels. With some beanage. No bullshit, it's good. It does feel small, it does feel quite small, but it feels super agile. Suspension feels decent, you know? It doesn't feel budget, it feels reasonable. You know, it's great they've put some uh, adjustability into it as well. I think you've got five clicks, you've got preload adjustment on the rear, plus some damping adjustment, just rebound damping. Uh, five clicks again on the rear. <laughs> There's the wheelie boys. Oh, I can't get it up. It, it, I'm too heavy. I'm too heavy to get it up. If all your mates had one of these, <laughs> went out on the Sunday morning on the Twisty Road, well, basically what we're doing now, absolutely hilarious. It's capable enough to chuck around and have some fun on, you know, without, obviously you will reach the limits of the handling and everything like that, but, you know, in true KTM fashion, I mean, look, it's got some proper, proper fun factor to it. Uh, there's Chris North over doing stand-up wheelies up ahead, of course. Not content with juice wheelies. He has to go one step further. Always got to take it too far. The brakes are actually surprisingly good. I have wound the preload up to maximum on the forks. Or not the preload, sorry, the rebound, the compression and rebound dampening I've maxed out just to give me a little bit more front support being 20 stone. But you've got a bit of dive, but the brakes feel nice, you've got a good amount of feel on the brakes. And the suspension seems reasonable, the quick shifter blipper seems to work really well. You know, it feels small. It looks absolutely fantastic, and looking look at the view when you're riding it, it looks like a looks like it could be on the 1390, doesn't it, looking down there like that. 15 litre fuel tank, which is I think is a litre and a half more than the old model. No, it's coming up for me. I can't get it up. It reminds me of a sort of an old 125 two-stroke screamer a little bit. The way you're just revving it. It revs so freely for a single. It, it, it's just got that whole sort of 125 two-stroke vibe to it from the 80s. Like my old, <laughs> my old uh, TZR 125. Now those sorts of bikes, absolute little little rocket ships, little screamers, it feels light like that as well. Yeah, this is a hell of a lot of fun. The riding position is, is sort of semi-sporty, it's quite hard. Oh, look at this muck. It's quite a hard sort of seat, I must say the seat does feel quite hard. Look at this road. But you sort of, you know, I feel quite tight and enclosed. I mean, it's not designed for people who are six foot two, really. But the bars sort of got you've got a little bit of weight on the front of the bike to give you a bit of feel from the front tire the pegs are sort of back a little bit behind your hip so you've got it's that sort of duke that duke riding position sort of naked comfortable but a little bit sporty not as extreme as the old 1290 super duke i don't know what the 1390 is like but it's definitely got that sort of bit of weight over the front to give a bit of feel from the nose of the bike look at the view that's neutral. Got mountains and everything. Ooh, try a bit of rear brake in. The rear brake's very nice. Oh, now look at this. This looks like fun. This looks like fun. This looks like where we start to get a little bit more twisty. Get a little bit more spicy now. I can see it. <laughs> Flip-flops are lovely. Could have done with a bit more preload in the rear. The rear's sort of almost on the softest setting. If they had a little bit more time, I would have asked them to <laughs> front up. I could drag it out. I can't get it up on the power. I could drag the front up, but I would have asked them to put a little bit more preload on the rear shock. It's it's way too soft for me. Even if it was firmed right up, I think it would still be way too soft for me.
Oh, this poor little bike. Absolute gonads. Getting screamed out of it. What a brilliant little thing. Now, a bike at this price point that can you can actually hustle. You can actually hustle this. Five seven more or less, five six nine nine. <laughs> yeah. A few of your mates on these. Or if I was 17 on one of these, I don't think I'll be here now. It's way too much fun. 390 cc or whatever it is. <laughs> Never felt so much fun. Oh, we've got a car. It's always a, it's always a four world monstrosity to sport with your fun, isn't there? Looks decent, doesn't it? As I say, you've got the uh, discs, both discs on the same side. You've got the shock off centre, new swinging arm, obviously adjusted to, pit, to to mount up with the shock pivot, new engine, new frame. So the seat is, uh, it doesn't feel too bad, but it's not massively wide. It's quite low though, I say, for the shorter rider. New subframe, aluminium subframe. It looks good. It does look really good. There's the new headlight. Running lights on the outside, obviously centre, a bit like the old sort of 890 Duke, the centre of the light there, isn't it? But definitely got that new new look that the KTMs have. <laughs> Beautiful. You've got launch control, trip information. Yeah, launch control, man. I don't, I think you can probably get away without needing the launch control. Look, it's not going to... Uh, be the best bike for the fast group at a track day <laughs> you know it, it is a budget motorcycle and it's obviously built to a budget 5700 pounds but for the money it is a great fun little bike i mean it's not perfect certainly for me being a 20 stone fatty you know it's a little bit cramped for me but in comparison with that with other bikes of a similar capacity it's reasonable i'm, I'm getting used to it already the suspension could definitely need a bit more support for my weight. Obviously, it's not designed for a 20 stone fatty. I could at least, before I did a Gymkhana thing, <laughs> I'm dreading the Gymkhana. I'm absolutely dreading the <laughs> Gymkhana on this. Elliston John. Elliston oh, John, you're up next. <laughs> <laughs> Junior. Douche. Oh, I've got him. Easy. Hey, piece of cake. Piece of cake. He's going down. Come on! Is it through that cone and between the barrels? For what it is, it's very good, and I guess you, you can't really tell how good it is until you test it against its, its competition, but I have a feeling that this is going to be the sportiest and the you know the most dynamic maybe when compared to its competitors i think it certainly looks the best i think it looks absolutely ace oh, let's see it let's see it yeah I'll, I'll give him that one so there we go we've had an afternoon thrashing around on this little bad girl and uh yeah it's a bike which costs five thousand seven hundred pound you know it's uh <laughs> no one consider it i mean it's it's a budget motorcycle it's a five thousand seven hundred pound motorcycle but it looks very very good i love what they've done with the style and where it looks like the 1290 like the 990 i think this new more sort of aggressive slightly larger physically larger bikes i've, I've got a lot of time for that being a larger guy but I've had a lot of fun on this. I mean, it's a little bit criticisms. It's a little bit uncomfortable, that seat. I mean, after sort of hour and a half we were riding, I really needed to get off. It is quite hard, the seat. It's not particularly wide. And if all of your mates had one of these, the fun you could have riding these bikes around. So um, massive thanks to KTM for inviting me for this. This is the celebration of 30 years of the Duke. 30 years of the Duke. So as part of these series of videos, we're going to take the 990 out tomorrow. And then also in the afternoon tomorrow, we're taking a new 1390 around circuit at Almeria. I cannot wait for that. Those videos are probably already out, 
so I'll chuck them at the top if you haven't seen them already. But uh, nice job on the 390 KTM. See you there, guys.